fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hayo silver, the Lone Ranger. Travel was a dangerous business in the early days of the western United States. Not even the railroads were safe from the outlaw gangs that roamed the frontier. And when the masked rider of the plains started his great fight for law and order, it was this type of criminal he drove out of the country first. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're on the trail of outlaws! Hail, oh, Silver! Away! <laughs> After dark, when Emma Bailey, tight-lipped and pale, let herself in the rear door of her ranch home, closed it softly behind her, then walked into the parlor where her mother and father were sitting. Oh, there you are. My, we thought you must have been lost. Uh, I didn't mean to be so long. Uh, where you been, daughter? Uh, just, just to the well. I didn't hear you fetch the bucket. I I didn't go for water. Huh? Went to the well, but didn't go for water? Now, what in tarnation would you go for, then? I just... That is it. Huh? Please, Father. But you said you didn't... Now, Paul, can't you quit pestering Emmy? Can't you see she's tired? My sakes, you think she never growed up the way you keep at her. I didn't mean nothing by it. That's all right, Father. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where's that no-account husband of yours? In town guzzling liquor again? He's back. You ain't seen him? He, he's outside, talking with someone. Oh. Emmy, don't you think you better sit down? You've been on your feet all day. I declare I don't see how you do it. I'll rest soon, Mother. <laughs> she wouldn't have to work so hard if that pole cat she married was worth the power to take to blow him up. Emmy... Why don't you give that fella a good talking to? I've tried, Father. It's, it's just no use. Mm -hmm. And then I will. No, Father, please. You, you must... But, Emmy, no, I'm not... No. Every time you talk to him, you get in an argument. When you argue, you get ill. Please don't say anything. No, don't, Nate. When I think of how 30 years ago I could have took a whippersnapper like him and He's broke coming. him... Like... I don't care. Well, you can folks... What's the matter? I ain't good enough to talk to you, eh? Why, you low down... Father, no... wait. <laughs> Is that man gone? Eh? 
I mean that man you were talking to in front. The man you rode here with. How'd you know he was with me? I saw you. Oh, spying on me again, eh? Well, I'll... Let's not quarrel here, Tom. I want to speak to you alone. What about? I'll tell you that later. But I want to know... Come on, Nick. We'll go and leave him be. No. No, Mother, don't get up. It ain't necessary. Tom and I can discuss this in the kitchen. Can't we, Tom? Now, you look here, Emma. I said, can't we? Well, I suppose so. Come on. We'll be back in a few minutes. While you're about it, tell him what I think of him. Close the door, Tom. Now, then. What are you getting so high and mighty about, I'd like to know. That was Abe you were with. Out front, you mean? Yes. Well, what if it was? That any business of yours? I, I think it's my business when my husband starts associating with crooks. Hey, you better be careful. Of what I call him? Yeah, and what you're hinting at. I don't like it, see? You wouldn't claim he isn't a crook, would you? Let's just talk. You're sure? Of course I'm sure. What in blazes you take me for, anyway? But I know Abe better than anyone else around here. Why, if he was crooked, I'd have found it out long ago. Or have you got some fool notion that wouldn't have made any difference to me? Tom, let's stop this beating about the bush. Eh? I told you months ago that it didn't matter to me anymore what you did. Any respect I might have had for you was destroyed when... when I learned you'd married me just to get your hands on my father's ranch. Why, you... Wait! Oh, I'm not complaining. I'm past and done with. I marriage, it wasn't because no one had warned me. I was told, but I wouldn't listen. I I was even so blind I persuaded Father to put the ranch in your name. <laughs> you took our money and spent it at drinking cards. You let the ranch run down. You haven't done a day's work in months. Well, I've no idea how our affairs stand. I, I suspect they're pretty bad. Oh, you do, uh... I don't see how they could be otherwise. As I said, though, I'll accept my share of the responsibility for all that, but but I won't stand by and see you turn crooked. What do you mean by that? Just what I said. What right have you got to say a thing like that, huh? What right have you got? You were talking to Abe. That don't prove a thing. Please, Tom. There's no use shouting at me. You see... Huh? You see, I, I did spy on you. I heard what you said. What you sense? Take your hand away. Why, you rotten sneak. What'd you hear, huh? What'd you hear? Come on, talk up. I intend to. Out with it. I... I heard you're planning a train robbery. Oh, you... I heard Abe tell you that one of his crooked friends was coming to help you with the robbery. And I heard you tell Abe that you'd give his friend a hideout. Why, I'd like but to you. But you won't, Tom. And you won't take part in any holdup. I won't let you. Why? You're talking loco. Don't lie to me, Tom. Your lies aren't convincing anymore. And, and I did hear you. There's nothing you can say to get around that. All right, you heard me then. Yes. But now you keep that mouth of yours shut while I tell you something. Well? Maybe you heard a lot. Maybe you think you can do a lot. But you ain't going to even try to stop me. You think you can frighten me by threat, don't. You can't. No? Well, how much of your pa's cash do you think is left in the bank? Uh, None of it, probably. You're doggone right. There ain't none left. But that's just the half of it. How many cows you think we got left? No, you've been selling to pay your gambling debts. You probably sold half of them. Half? <laughs> Why, you little fool, we ain't got title of one single critter out there in that range. You, you sold everything? Everything. Tom, how could you? I had to. But... Wait till I finish. I suppose you was figuring that if I didn't promise to go straight, you'd tell the law what you heard, huh? I will. Well, then think this over. Tell the law, get me jailed. And what's going to happen to your folks? Think folks their age could get out and work? Think you could find work to support them? (laughs) Oh, no. Why, the three of you would starve in a month. You'd be thrown off this place inside of a week of my going to jail. I'll give Abe a note with the buildings for security. (laughs) I've got his promise to wait before putting in his claim. But if you talk out of turn, I'll tell him to go ahead and foreclose. You rotten thief. <laughs> but you kind of see things different now. I huh? wouldn't be afraid of starving. <laughs> no, most likely not. But you wouldn't want to see your folks starve, would you? You. you. <laughs> well, would you? Tom, I, I think you're the most detestable man who ever lived. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but I won't talk. Yeah, you <laughs> Three days later, in the middle of the afternoon, the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, rode toward the Bailey Ranch. There, place. Looks rather run down, Kimosabe. Ah. Well, it'll do no harm to ask, Tonto. They can't sell us supplies. You can always get them in town. That's right. Right around to the back. Ah. This way, old fellow. Here we are. Rain up. Oh, oh, oh Scott. Oh, Silver. Oh, fellow. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Wait here. What is Raise it? Raise him, I said. If I pull this trigger, I can't miss. Not so fast. You... Don't let this mask mislead you. I'm not an outlaw. Please don't bother to deny it. If you think I don't know my husband's expecting you, you're mistaken. Your husband's expecting me? You know he is. But I just If want... I had my way, I'd turn the three over to, over to the law. I can't. But I can refuse to let my home be turned into an outlaw's hideout. Hideout, eh? You did plan to stay at the house, didn't you? This sounds interesting. I thought... I'll take that gun. Oh. <laughs> uh, there. That's better. I wish I'd never waited. I wish I'd shot you the minute you came to this door. One moment. Why? Oh, I... You believe I'm an outlaw. Evidently, you believe I'm someone your husband has expected. You, you mean I'm it? not. Well, then I... Said either too much or too little. But I... Too much, perhaps, for your husband's good. But too little for my information. You, you're really not the man Tom said was coming? You, you'll swear you're not? I'm not. But that, that mask, I, I was sure you... If I were the man you thought me, I'd have no reason to deny it. Oh, then... It... Then I've spoiled everything. Go inside. But I don't... Uh, what trouble here? It's all right, Tato. Just stay with the horses. Uh-huh. I'll be out in a moment. This woman and I are going to have a talk. Not long afterwards, the Lone Ranger left the house and rejoined Tonto. As they headed for their secret camp, the masked men rode in silence. It was not until he and Tonto were sitting beside their campfire that night that he finally told the Indian what had happened. I should have explained earlier, Tonto, but I've been trying to make up my mind to something. What that? I'll ask you a question. Allowing for her excitement when she thought me an outlaw, what did you think of that woman back at the ranch? Mm, well, me like her. Yes? Er, uh, all right. I see. Well, I just about come to that same conclusion myself. What you mean? I had to make up my mind about her. You see, Tonto, when I spoke to her inside the ranch house, she refused to say anything to explain what she'd said earlier. Oh. When I pointed out she'd as much as admitted her husband and two other men were planning something crooked, she kept silent. Mm, not bad. I might have questioned her until she broke down, but I didn't want to. It was plain to see that she was frightened and nervous. Mm. She would have suffered too much if I'd kept on. I decided to wait. Her not say anything? And just one thing. She said it over and over again. That's why I had to make my mind up, whether she was honest and terrified or dishonest and frightened, simply because she was afraid of exposure. Uh, uh, me, Sally. She said she couldn't talk, that if she did, her parents would suffer for it. Who them? I didn't see them. But I gather they were well along in years. Oh. Now, no matter whether she's honest or not, if she's in possession of facts that the law should have, she must tell what she knows. All right. If she's dishonest, she must expect to pay for what she's done. Though I doubt that the law would be too hard on a woman. Mm. But on the other hand... What do you think? If she's honest, if she told me the truth, and her parents will suffer if she talks, then it's up to us to make sure they're not forced to pay because she does her duty. Mm. What we do? You're riding to town. Uh-huh. And you're going to bring me every scrap of information concerning your husband that you can find. Ah, uh, me go now. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. It was in the morning, two days later, that Emma's father hobbled from the window where he had been watching and sat down beside his wife. He shook his head doubtfully. Hetty, I'd have took oath the fell on that white horse was wearing a mask. Oh, Nate, I think you just imagined it. Well, my eyes ain't so good no more. Oh, of course you imagined it. Which way'd you go? Round back, Summers. Well, then that's why Emmy must have left the house. Mm-hmm. And that's why it had me worried. If that gent was an outlaw... Oh, sure, Nate. Most likely he's just a cow hand looking for work. Amy wouldn't go outside and talk to a masked man. <laughs> I wonder. Why, Nate, what a thing to say. Well, she's been that mighty funny of late. Well, she's been worried. She's been that ever since she got hitched to that skunk she married. No, I mean this is something more unusual. This is something that uh, happened just lately. Well, what makes you think so? Because for the last two days, she's been as skittish as a horse with a burr under his saddle. Can't hardly look at her without she jumps. Oh, well, the trouble she's had with Tom, it's a wonder she ain't worse. But if it's just the usual trouble, why ain't she told us about it? Huh? Ain't you noticed? She ain't even mentioned Tom lately. What? Well, no, I can't say you did notice. Well, it's so. So what's she keeping from us? We know about Tom's drinking and gambling. Wouldn't be no point in her trying to keep that a secret. Well, I, well, I don't know what to say. I thought that they were just... Nate, what on earth? There, there he goes. And, and he is masked, doggone it. He's masked just like I told you he was. But what, why? I don't know what and I don't know why. But Emmy can tell us, and when she comes in, I'm going to see that she does. I won't let... Oh, there you are. What is it, Father? Daughter... That was a masked man just rode away. Yes. You, you admit it? Why not? Wait, why, oh, wait, you, Nate, do stop pestering her. Haven't I told you a thousand times? Can you know? keep quiet? Daughter? Yes, Father? You willing to answer a question? What is the question? What business is a masked man with you? He... He wanted information, Father. Huh? And... And I gave it to him. I, I had to. I just had to. What information? You, you'll you hate me. Daughter, what on earth it, are you... It's information that... that if he acts on it will... will cost us our home. Ranger left the ranch house and raced across country until he arrived at camp where Tonto was waiting for him. Oh, oh, there, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, Tonto. Uh, what happened? She talked, Tonto. Mm, that good call, Scout. We're riding. Here, Scout. She's a brave woman. I didn't have to persuade her to talk. She decided to do that herself. Uh, what's more, I told her nothing of our plans. I wanted her to do what was right without feeling she'd be rewarded for it. You see Lawman now? Not yet. Why, wait. There's no hurry on that score yet. Her husband and this fellow Abe are waiting for a third man to arrive. She said they spoke of him as if he were a wanted criminal. Oh. So we'll make sure he's caught with his partners. Uh, and that good? And they don't plan to strike yet. I have an idea they're waiting for the train that carries a bullion shipment from the stamp mill. They are. That gives us over a week. And that plenty of time. No more than we need, Kimasabi. They can wait. Uh. But between now and then, we have to call on every rancher in the district. Into the saddle, Tata. Uh. Let's go. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Hurry, old fellow. Our first stop, Tonto. Oh, 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 oh fella. Oh, 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 Scout. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Jackson? That's me, but... Hey, your man. Forget the mask. Listen to what I have to say. Ranger, you say Jackson promised to go in on this? He did. I can check on that, you know. I expect you to. But if you find I've told you the truth... Mister, I'll get in with the rest of the boys 100%. Good. We'll do this job right. And 
I can count on you. You didn't have to call around, stranger. I've talked to Baylor and Jackson and Clements and a dozen others. I'm for this as strong as they are. Call out your men at once. You bet. And stranger, yes? let me tell you, you're doing a mighty fine thing. Ready, Tonto? Uh-huh. I'll Get him up, Scout! Get him away! <laughs> Two days later, a great roundup was in progress on the open range, and the Lone Ranger and Tonto watched from a nearby hill. Tonto, there hasn't been a roundup like this in years. Uh, 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 uh. Isn't that right, Dad? Those ranchers will comb cattle out of the brush in the hills, cattle that never saw a rope or felt a branding iron. Uh, uh. Wouldn't surprise me if they gathered as many mavericks as there are cattle in any single herd. And them find plenty, all right. But the best thing of all uh. is something like this. That proves Westerners can be the finest neighbors of all. The roundup continued, and although it was out of season, the ranchers refused to offer any explanation. Bailey and Abe were only mildly curious. The plans for the robbery took all their time, and on the day after the roundup was completed... They were sitting in the parlor of the Bailey Ranch House. Emma Bailey was with them, and... Abe, I found out what train's going to carry that gold. Day after tomorrow, ain't it? Oh, you heard too, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it's, they think as a doggone train ain't never been held up, it's never going to be. They don't make no more secret of it than they would of the weather. <laughs> Tom. Eh? What do you want? Tom, please, listen to me. Give this up. Tell Abe you won't have anything to do with it. Eh? Bad as I need cash? You crazy? <laughs> you hear that, Abe? <laughs> she wants me to say I won't go in on this with you. <laughs> yeah, I heard it. Look here, ma'am. Yes? Tom's told me why you ain't gonna do no talking to the law. But I reckon it wouldn't hurt none if I was to add my say to that. One word out of you, just one word... And you and your folks will be out of this house just as fast as I can have you put out. I'm not fooling. Being in jail wouldn't stop me from foreclosing on that note of time. Tom, won't you listen? Won't you? Uh, shut up, can't you? Where's Nate and your ma? Why don't you go look after them? Maybe it'd pay you to see they ain't doing no snooping. Stay in the kitchen. And go join them. I, I'd rather stay here. You heard oh, me. let her stay. She ain't doing no harm. Now, uh, about Dirk. He'll stay hid out in that camp you showed him till it's time for us to go into action. Then he'll... Where... Where'd you say he was? What's it to you? Oh, I, I just wondered. Well, I had him hide out over where the creek runs through the breaks, if you have to know. Now, leave us be. we got things to figure out. Yeah. Is it creek, you say? Can't you hear? Yeah, that's what I said. A dog got to beat it. Yes, Tom. Hey, not that way. Not outside. Go back to the kitchen with your folks. Hey, come back here. Come in, Sheriff. All right, man. What? The Sheriff? What the... Careful there, Tom. I wouldn't reach for that iron if I was you. Abe, keep your hand away from that holster. What in thunder's the meaning of this? The way you started for that gun, I'd have said you had a pretty good idea. You can't come Now behave yourself. Well, ma'am, did you get out of them where their partner's hiding out? Yes, in the breaks near the creek. They just told me. Tom, I thought you said she wouldn't talk. You went to the law. Uh, Are you squealing a little? Easy, I'll show you. You'll do nothing but behave yourself like you've been told to get drilled. And your wife didn't go to the law. I was sent out here by a masked man. I talked to your wife before you fellas got here. She owned up when I told her what I knew. And I've been hiding outside just to see what you two skunks would be scheming. You'll pay for this. I had to do it, Tom. Didn't you realize that even if we had to suffer for it, I couldn't stand by while you turned crooked? If I could just get my hands on you, I... The more you threaten now, the worse it'll be for you later. You ain't got nothing on us. I heard a plenty. I'll testify if it's necessary. But I tell you... I don't reckon you gents are so well liked around here that anybody's going to bother about you not actually doing anything. I figure when it's told what you scheme to do... That'll be plenty. That won't stop me from keeping my promise. Yeah? I want her thrown out of this house. And if folks along with her, it's mine. Tom signed it over to me when he borrowed cash. Now you get them out. Is that a fact, ma'am? Did this poor cat of a husband of yours even get cash on the place you live? He did, sir. But you turned him in in spite of what they could do to you? I had no choice. Ma'am, my hat's off to you. 
I don't know if I'd have been in your boots if I'd had the gumption to go through with it or not. Hey, what's that? Hey, well, doggone, look out the window there. Look at them critters coming over the hill. Let's surround them. What are they doing here? Gosh, that's a funny thing. Ain't no cattle trail, and I don't suppose that they're... What's it? What's it? Mrs. Bailey. Yes? That herd is yours. Man, no. No, there must be some mistake. Every one of those steers bears your brand. Huh? How's that? Didn't you wonder about the roundup the ranchers were carrying out? Huh? They knew what Mrs. Bailey was facing because she dared to do her duty to the law. And they saw to it she wouldn't suffer. I don't savvy. That herd didn't cost them a penny beyond the labor to round it up. And yet it's worth thousands of dollars. Whatever may be owed to Abe here can easily be paid from it. There'll still be a herd large enough to give this ranch another start. You mean... You mean that herd's really mine? Every animal in it. But how could all them steers be handed over without it costing nobody nothing? They were mavericks. Oh. Each year, hundreds of animals have escaped branding, and cattle have been so plentiful, the ranchers never took the trouble to comb the country thoroughly. And this is the result. Those mavericks belong to anyone who put his brand on them. The ranchers mark them with a brand of this ranch. Well, I'll be... Then I won't lose my home. Doggone, I don't think you will. It ain't right. I won't... Shut up. Ma'am? Yes? Something tells me it wasn't the ranchers that thought of this stunt all by themselves. I'll be willing to bet my bottom dollar that they got some help at it from the mass man. Just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger.